and welcome to another exciting episode of Iconic Moments with Mary Stosh. My name is Mary Stosh and as you already know, this is the only platform where we bridge the gap between you and your favorite celebrities, your favorite icons, giving you the opportunity to be able to relate with them one on one. And today we have somebody that is making me tremble. His voice alone is art. He is a husband, he is a father, he is a poet, he is a writer, matter of fact, he is a lecturer of theatre and uh, cultural studies at the University of Yaldewan. He is a states person. He is the director of cinematography and audiovisual productions at the Ministry of Arts and Culture. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we welcome Professor Donatus Fai Tange. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope I did pronounce that well. Yeah, you did. It's really an honor to have you. It's my pleasure. Yes, a lot of people were so excited. Uh, they say you're a man of people. They say uh, you you're involved everywhere, and so they're really, really so excited to have you. It's a lot. Yes, and so I'm, I'm sure it's going to be very, very interactive. So before we begin, aside to everything I've said, uh, I'd like us to start off with who else is Professor Five mm. Tanganyika? is Five Tanganyika. Is hails from Kame, originally from Bot. Uh, but you know, my father settled in Kame, so I was born in Kame. My mother is from Kugi, my father from Bot. So we settled in Kame. I went to DHS Kame and came to the University of Yamuma. Yes. And I studied also at Binghamton State State University in New York. Wow. And um, I have my first degree in University of Yamuma. I have uh, a professional master's uh, in the University of Yaguan, I have a BA in the University of Yaguan, I have an MPhil in the State University of New York, mm -hmm. in Binghamton. Then I came back here and I PhD. Uh, I guess that's all I have that is not getting on about me. Mm -hmm. If there's any other thing, I, uh, I love family. Yes. And I love to do sports. Yes. And I'm very passionate about it. A, a, a don indeed, a don indeed. But before we proceed with this, uh, this uh, interview, um, you have a lot of books in your credits. You've written poems, you've written uh, theses, you've written uh, scientific articles, you've written books. Uh, first, we'd like to know um, what inspires your writing and what inspired your choice of career? Why did you love to go into audiovisual studies? That's, 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 that's a very interesting question. Um, growing up, I initially, before I had my A-levels, I wanted to be a monk. Oh. I felt that I wanted to be a priest, a reverend priest. Mm -hmm. For some reasons, after my A-levels, those dreams failed. I still remember I met uh, Father Robert Tanto, Father G uh, Joseph G.T., who wrote, uh, who made recommendations for me because according to the regulations, those who are not going to minor seminary, mm -hmm. for them to go to preschool. You needed a recommendation from the priest. Yes. So I had my father John G. He's of late now. And Father Robert Tato were my coaches. So I wanted to be a priest. And for some reasons, those dreams collapsed just after my A levels. And then, uh, then I entertained the, um, the ambition to be a, uh, a soldier. Because my father, my grandfather fought the First World War. My father fought the Second World War. Mm. So I was boiling something that I would like to be yes. in the military. That is after my ambitions to be a priest failed, then I wanted to go to, to be a soldier. And uh, when I, after the elders, I came here, here one day, and I went for the uh, competitive exams to EMEA. Yes. And I used to be a very good sporter. Okay. And they said, oh, I have this huge umbilical cord uh, that if, if uh, you know, you know, this, they say if I didn't go for surgery, because there's a lot of sports in there, yes. it's developed into a yeah. So oh. I went and met my father, I said, hey, dad, they say I need to get an operation. I need to go for surgery operation so that they will qualify me as a soldier. My father pulled the chair and said, sit down. I said, mm -hmm. okay, you left this house, I don't know you have a problem. And now, only because of your ambition to go to military, you want, strange things. you want to ask you, oh, you should go get, so forget about it. Yeah. 
and that's how now my ambition to be a priest collapsed. That of being uh, a soldier collapsed as well. Then now I had to go to university mm -hmm. and I decided I would be in a theater, mm -hmm. you know, where I could be a priest, I could be a soldier, exactly. I could be the head of state, oh, wow. I could be anything I want to be. Exactly. And that's why I joined, you know, the university theater when I go to the university. And my passion kept me going. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's what inspired me. And you see, my writings, my poems, my drama pieces, my uh, articles are inspired by the environment in which I live, by the realities, mm -hmm. you know, the daily events. I don't write articles based on just uh, characters in the book. Yes, there could be characters in the book, but then I want to relate that to my immediate environment. Mm -hmm. I want to relate that with how uh, it connects. You know, with society, with the human society. So that's what keeps me going. Beautiful. You, you are, you are, uh, uh, would you say that that was um, um, a mistake that was frustrated by fate? Because um, you know, where you are now, would you have wished, if you turned back the hands of time, would you have wished to be something else? Because it's um, a long way. Again, I am a Christian, a very profound Christian. Yes. And I know God's handwriting on the world can mm -hmm. never be changed. Exactly. So, Perhaps I would not have been a good priest. Perhaps I would not have been a good soldier. Exactly. Or I would not be alive today. So I, I, I say, you know, God designs it. Yes. They say man proposes and God disposes. So I thought I was better off as a priest. Then I thought I was better off as a soldier. And God put me on the track. And I'm making the most of it. I yes. have no regrets. You know, I only tell these stories to say, you know what? Sometimes they say, if life gives you a lemon, then you do lemonade. Exactly. So, you don't, you don't live your life in regrets. That's why there are certain things I've made some mistakes in life. Yeah. But I don't look at it and say, why did I go there? Listen, that happened for a reason. I was committed to something and it turned the other way around. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, fine. God's hand gave me a different orientation. And so I'm on this path. And I'm just doing what I want to do, what I like to do, and I enjoy it. Exactly. I, I think it's amazing. You mentioned that you, you wanted to go into theater because you could be anything, you could even be a head of, a, yes, a head of state. The and set. then we see that on the set. But now, we see that materializing, not only on set, from um, a professor to a United States person, a very direct talk. Well, yeah, you see, <laughs> I, 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 don't want, I don't want this to be misconstrued that I'm looking up to becoming a president. Of course I, I, I mean okay. that on the theater stage, yes. you know, I play the role. I have played the role of a king. Hmm. And when I did, um, uh, Antigone, you know, a play by Sophocles, in which I played the major role of Creon. You know, this is a state person, it's a king, mm. whose orders become, you know, uh, no one can dare to contravene what he says. Mm. Sometimes I enjoy doing those things. And what I simply mean is, where life has put me, I try to make the most of it. Today I am director of cinema of the Jogodons, by the grace of God, and I know you know, there have been other directors before I came. Exactly. So there will be more, maybe better directors after I, 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 I leave. But while I'm there now, I'm just trying to do my little best mm -hmm. and then I add my own little building blocks to making the Kamean cinematographic platform a little better than I meant. Mm -hmm. That's my ambition. So to leave your legacy so that to leave your legacy. Say, yes. Uh, prom was here. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, good. Talk about that and a whole lot of and your involvement in CFI and all of that. Yes. But I'd, I'd like us to quickly visit. You wrote an article on popular culture where you articulate the relationship between historical social realities and pop culture. And then you give, uh, in this article, you're giving credit to the BR regime for the great popularity in contemporary pop culture, which you call the oral forms of literature. By that, I'm assuming you are talking about music, poetry, yes. film. Oh, I'm really glad you did. That means you have been, you follow that part because that's an article I published about three or four articles on popular culture. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the critic that gave the BIA regime is I'm comparing BIism with a Hijo yes, yes, uh, period. Exactly. In which, you know, within the Hijo period, um, writers or writing in was mm -hmm. heavily, heavily monitored. And so you wouldn't see people who were publishing freely because of the censorship. Mm -hmm. Now, the post-Ahijo Cameroon is that which came with a, a little more opening 
greater opportunities, more democratic openings, more liberation. Of course, if you can't forget the 1990 uh, laws mm -hmm. on liberation, of because before now we had only um, uh, Cameroon television, Cameroon radio, yes. and the Cameroon TV. Exactly. Now, there was a law that was promulgated by Paul Beer that opens us up. Now we have multiple channels. Of exactly. course, the channel as yours would never exist sure. at the time. Sure. So, what I'm giving uh, the, the Beer regime over a hijo is the opening. And because you have works like Mutake's Apama Mufu, mm. we have works like uh, uh, Bison's Beast of No Nation, mm. we have works like Kenga, Kenga Song's uh, Black Caps and Red Feathers. Yes. These are works that are published only within the framework of an opening, of yes. liberation, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, yes. which only came with uh, 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 Paul Beer's uh, policy. Yes. All right? Prior to that, we had the works like, um, I remember, uh, Victor Elami Musinga, uh, who wrote uh, uh, his uh, work, Trial of uh, Passion. No, no, not Trial of Passion. You, you know, his works, Victor Elami Musinga, who is alive now and is living in Boya, mm -hmm. his works were more of comedy because nobody could dare write what was critical of yes, society. Yes. If you look at the setting works like uh, uh, Proper and now, I'm married, Three Switches, One Husband. All right, by Oyonomia. These are works, and then His Excellency's Special Train. These are uh, uh, productions or publications that benefited uh, Ahijo's Prize. Okay, Prince right. Ahijo's Prize. Right. Because people were not allowed. People, sometimes they were scared because of the heavy censorship. Yes. So a lot of people dare not open up. Now, with the bigger system, when beer came over and then opened up the system, now you could read by the person, you could read. Bole Butake, you could read John Kenderson. Mm -hmm. And they are very critical of society. Mm -hmm. And this is this is actually the fallout of the new policy brought in by the new team. Mm -hmm. Alright? And when, uh, uh, I'm not being political here, but when President Bia says uh, he's, he introduced democracy, yes, our baby steps in democracy started with him. Sure. And today, this freedom of expression, freedom of the multiplicity, of media outlets mm -hmm. only came with a beer. Read. So that is what he said in that article. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad someone at least is, is, is paying attention to, to my yes. publications. You cannot see that, like I said, uh, I like my publications are inspired by things of every day, mm -hmm. by the, the, the policies, by the, what we live in. I see you, you used to longer, longer, Yes, longer, now longer, in, in, in it works like the, 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 the musical. Uh, Production exactly. of Loge Loge, you know, he is doing what I call oral history. He's relating history in his songs. Mm -hmm. If you listen to musical productions, some of them have very critical messages, information yes. that is meant, you know, to conscientize, to educate, and to impress on society. Sometimes we have our moral backwash, we have our moral pitfalls, and some writers or some songwriters, musicians, they set out to correct certain ears. Yes. There is this popular uh, song by, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Leo. Uh, 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 and vet, uh, virtually, he is making an advocacy. Mm -hmm. If you get pregnant, please do not abort. abort. Yes. He sings that song in Beijing. Yes. This is a moral lesson. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's, it's, I, I like to encourage works like that because mm -hmm. they are uh, adding up to the informal aspect of social education. He's doing social mobilization. He's doing uh, construction of the moral person. So that in the end, his song is making you dance, but then it's making you reason, if you sure. have time for it. Sure. So, those are the kinds of things I agree. Now, at the same time, we have some songs, and I, I regret to talk about it. My thoughts, oh. I would <laughs> encourage, if I, if I have my possibilities, I would say, you know what, this young man, is endowed with talent, talents, talent, potentials. But now you need to canalize, you need to orientate, you need to coach them. I was going to talk bring about the that. positive aspects of because I know every talent comes from God. Mm. Every talent you have on earth is given by the Almighty. Yes. And it's therefore a digression. It's actually 
a betrayal to use God's talent to propagate the, 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 the issues mm. on the other side, mm. the contrary forces. Prof, I was going to talk about that. I was going to say, uh, in as much as you would praise um, the regime for giving that freedom of expression when it comes to this um, art, don't you think that that could also be accountable for moral decay in um, maybe movies, music, and well, unfortunately, that is the package that comes with it. When you say we are in democracy, yeah. when you say we have freedom of speech, now it's for freedom of expression. It is for the individual to do checks and balances. Yes. It's for the individual, you know, you, you auto criticize yourself hmm. in order to, because you don't go to a public place like this and then you just throw uh, uh, what could yeah. be. Uh, annoying hmm. to the senses so it's for us to to you know make the most of the positive contributions that this opening can give i take the example of uh, social media today yes. it's a wonderful tool True. but how are we using it exactly. now it's not because someone uh, it is often said misuse does not negate use True. all right that the fact that someone is using now the freedom of expression the freedom of uh, thought and expression to, to, to say all the oddities, all the, the, the stupidities and maybe uh, uh, propagate what I wouldn't want society to promote does not make the platform irrelevant. It only says, now the job you and I have is to canalize, yes. is to bring some of those people back on board and say, hey, Malox, you are intelligent, you have creative abilities, use the talent God has given you to make his world a little better because it is often said that the new creation of an artist is God's way to partner with man to make the society better. Mm -hmm. So each time you see like a musician, mm -hmm. like an artist, like a, a, a painter or a filmmaker, when you come up with a new product, put it straight in your mind, you are making a contribution to making society better. Mm -hmm. So you are leaving a footprint, one footprint on the sands of time. If not, you don't have to do it. Sure. And there is a, a, a Japanese saying, the Japanese proverb that says, if it's not yours, don't take it. If it's not good, don't do it. Hmm. If it's not right, don't say it. And if you do not know, sit quiet. Listen, if we were all, if there was a way to draw this into the consciousness of every community, or they set every citizen of the world, mm -hmm. it would be better for exactly. So that now you don't need to relate with people like someone walking on X because you are afraid, because oh, there's no trust anymore. If we go by the standards prescribed by the Almighty, by divine prescription, mm -hmm. divine principles, I will not sit by you and be, be a little scared that you are poison me. Sure. I wouldn't sit by you and be scared that you. I will say something and then you use that to, to, to run me down. Yeah. So we have the duty now to begin to see how to coach, to orientate, to guide, mm. to pattern, you know, to chisel and, and adjust our comportment so that you will not be misunderstood, you will not be misread, and you will not be misinterpreted. This is getting so interesting already. <laughs> and viewers, before we go ahead, I'd like to remind you that the comment section is open. If you have a direct question for Prof, you know what to do. Go ahead and type your preoccupation. If you have an appraisal for him or just something to say, please do write that, that, that down on the comment section and we'll make sure that we relay your message to him. If it's a question, he's going to answer you live and direct. Now, Prof, uh, I do agree with you, but then you will also bear with me that uh, moral decay is something that's so difficult to adjust. So if we are talking about people working on their consciences, that might not be quite effective. Now, I'm talking as a state person. What's the ministry putting in place to make sure that, you know, there is some uh, um, some checks and balance on what, what is laid out? Now, let, 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 you said uh, moral decay is something that is hard to rectify. Yes. I would say no, because everybody, every single individual you meet in the street mm -hmm. who is morally decayed, mm -hmm. who is not subscribing to the right frame of things, has a home, has a family. If every other family, every, every other household, mm -hmm. it is said that uh, uh, the family is the basic unit of society. Mm -hmm. If there's peace, if there's love, there's uh, tranquility in every household, the community will be peaceful. 
the community will be clean. Yes. If every community is clean, the nation will be clean. It's, it's, if every nation is clean, the world will be at peace. Yes. Now, what this means is, you know, the takeoff point for decadence is the home. Either there is a dysfunction mm. in matrimonial relationship, the home state is in disarray, mm. and the kids that grow within those uh, broken homes, now there is hardly enough opportunity for them to be canalized, mm. to be uh, imparted with the required attitude, character. Mm. When this is missing, then, you know, they, they say the dysfunction that happens in a matrimonial home is reputed, is uh, uh, echoed on the society. All right? Mm. Societal values would be enhanced if every household does its responsibility. If every household is held together, every uh, child of a home is brought up together, now you don't have street children. Mm -hmm. Today, the consequence of streetism can be traced to broken homes. The consequence of moral decay can be traced to the dysfunction in the mm -hmm. home. If we can start by repairing that, that would be wonderful. Now, you ask what the Ministry of Arts and Culture is doing. Ministry of Arts and Culture is, you remember the way the government is structured. Mm. Everyone has their responsibility. True. Now, the Ministry of Arts and Culture is more interested in the values of our culture and our artistic competencies. Yes. And we know we can use this to uh, step up our economic development. True. We can step up our personal evolution. We can step up even our national income. Valorizing now, our cultural identity. Valorizing our cultural identity. Now, what the Ministry of Arts and Culture does is, I look at what is valuable at about, about our culture, about our arts, that can be given visibility. Yeah. And they start patterning policies. Mm -hmm. They start developing principles. They start putting in place structures to help accompany those values that the world needs to know. One wonderful thing that... I have an admission in University of Durban to, to read another PhD in Peace and Conflict Studies. Oh. I am enrolled in a second PhD in anthropology at the University of Yaoundé One. Now, I am actively a student at IRIC in multiculturalism, peace, and international cooperation. Now, what is driving me on, you would ask. At every point, somebody looks at me and says, ah, you guys have done so much. When I look at myself, I think I still have, there are gaps yes. in me. I've not yet explored 10% of my potentials. Oh, wow. And so this keeps me going. I'm still looking inward. Now, when I tell anybody listening to me, watching me now say, I am a student at IRIC, studying multiculturalism, peace, and international cooperation. They're like, what else are you looking for? <laughs> Excuse me, there's so much yeah. to be learned. Okay. You know, and once I identify a gap in my attitude, in my approach to things, sometimes there are times I put my knees down and say, hey, Lord, I don't know how to do this. Only you can empower me. Mm -hmm. Especially in terms of how you relate with people. I have had situations where some people describe me as a very proud person. And that was the saddest moment of my life. Um, um, because I don't want to be a proud person. Mm -hmm. I know that the Bible says it. God says he resists a proud spirit. Mm -hmm. So if I'm proud, I like to hold your hand and say, Mavis, come, come on, let's walk down the road. And we are happy about our pro program we have done. Everybody likes it. And we are happy. Mm -hmm. Now, if I look at Mavis and say, hey, who are you? And then, I'm, then that way I, I know. I will be dismissed from God's vineyard the moment you will try to ignore a fellow human being. So my idea to people is, if you have risen to a level where you think that other people are substandards, yeah. other people are subhumans because of whoever you are, hey, take it. That's why, like on this your program, they keep, oh, icons like you, I am not an icon. I'm only a passionate person who likes to do what he, he, he likes to do, you know? <laughs> because sometimes of those titles, they come with big heads and then you start go, going around yeah. thinking that you are... No! So you don't want them to get into your head? I don't want nothing to get into my head because yeah. I'm still a baby. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people I admire because I see when I listen to them talk, I know, oh Jesus, mm -hmm. how would I ever get to this level? Oh, and a lot of people too admire you and wonder how they'll get to your I level. Don't know. <laughs> I don't that know! That is the truth. <laughs> that is the truth. And, and that brings us to this. When we shared... Um, the flyer for the, the show that we're going to have you. Right. We had a lot of movie makers reaching out and saying, this is interesting. I, I really want to follow. Okay. Uh -huh. the, uh, that uh, reminded us that you've been actively participated in, you participated in CFI. Yes. You, 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 you were present at the press conference for the launching of the 26th edition of the Ekranwa Film Festival. Yes. 
uh, just a couple of weeks ago, you were in Douala for the Douala oh, Film Community Launching. Film Community Launch, yes. yes. And a couple of programs we yes. see. Yes. So people wanted to know why you have a special interest for uh, CFI. Uh, um, now, I, I, I want us to, to, to make this division. Yes. The concept CFI is multidimensional. I would say it's, it's, it's double. Mm -hmm. The CFI, which is a standard structure, yes. that's a, a, a regulated structure created by young people. That is a civil society organization. Mm -hmm. There's now the global CFI, which is Cameroon film industry. Yes. Whether you like it or not, now on the Cameroon film industry, the global structure, as director of cinema, mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I take every interest yes. in the minutest initiative undertaken by young people, a child of four years, yes. a, 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 an adolescent of 16 years, an adult of 50 years, or an old man of four of, of 80 years. Mm -hmm. The moment I hear, now I want to see how much of that initiative can be uh, uh, counted as a contribution towards giving Cameroonian cinema mm -hmm. Uh, 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 taking it to another level. Yes. So generally, I take a lot of interest because I realize as director of cinema, my job is not to sit in offices. Yes. It's to see how to galvanize, how to mobilize, how to make people come up with things that could, initiatives and movements that can give us greater visibility. Mm -hmm. And so wherever there is anything on film, mm -hmm. on cinema, on Cameroonian movie, yes. I'll be interested. Oh. And uh, there are some individuals that I have I've reached out to because mm -hmm. some Darling guys who know so much in the industry and nobody knows that they know as much yeah. as I know. So I'll get to them and just to elevate my own knowledge, to yeah. know a little more and then see how to make this, the, the scene a little better. Mm -hmm. When, when uh, I heard about the young uh, people who came together with the uh, Duala film community and I hear there's a Bamenda film community that's building up, mm -hmm. there's a Boya film community that's building up, there's a Yaoundé film community that's building up, that can only be an indicator of how much the domain is uh, uh, seductive to young people, how much yes. that domain is attractive exactly. to young people, exactly. how much that domain is growing. Now, the Ministry of Arts and Culture is putting in place the structuralization program, is looking up to activating the national potentials from the subdivisions to the divisions and to the regions oh, and then wow. to the nation. Yes. Interesting. The, you see, in the days ahead, the Minister of Arts and Culture has set a structure from every subdivision, they're going to be creating what they call unions. At the level of the division, it become company. And then at the region, now they call it guilds, but they call it conglomerates. Yes. All right? And then at the nation now, to, because the, the idea is to create a, a, a federation of different artistic and cultural pools. Mm -hmm. Now, at, at artistic and cultural movements, it's, it's an opportunity by which the government could reach out and assist. Because if you call now uh, a federation of cultural dances, mm -hmm. All right, or fashion, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, um, filmmakers, photography, and ballet dancers. You have them. Mm -hmm. So if you need any domain in there, you know where to reach out. Oh. And I come from Kambe, mm -hmm. and I see a lot of young people who are developing wonderful. They are they are grooming themselves in uh, uh, audiovisual productions, yes. in, in uh, video and film productions. Mm -hmm. And I know that those in Kambe can only benefit from the visibility that these structures have the moment the government structurization program that has been initiated by the Ministry of Arts and Culture takes off the ground because now we we'll identify the local potentials, yes. bring them on board until they now can be better organized and yes. better assisted by the government structures. Oh, no. So the intention is to help young people who are boiling with talent. Yes. My duty at this point is to let the government and every other person who could listen to me know mm -hmm. that the art and culture subsector has what it takes to change the economy of this country. The, the, the cinema industry yes. has changed the economy of Nigeria, yes. of Ghana, of, of uh, India, of America, of France, yes. of uh, 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 Belgium, and you name them. Yes, sir. So we have a very rich heritage, culturally speaking, yes. that the world needs to consume. And sure. the earlier we canalize, we reorientate and adjust, you know, the, 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 the framework, you know, the baseline from which to grow this industry, mm -hmm. the better for us. Wow. You, you, that will spark up uh, this preoccupation that someone has. Uh, he mentioned that 
the, the uh, children now go to schools to study cinematography and audiovisual production and uh, audiovisual studies if that's that yes speaking. and he's saying do you think that's sustainable is it as advisable can a Cameroonian youth make a living from that I would say yes uppercase hmm. because today what, what you're saying uh, relates with what we talk about uh, the professionalization of university studies yes it is the wish of every university that or uh, of every child that goes to university that you live with a trait where we are now we're doing general education yes now someone will go to the university and learn uh, modern letters you go enrolled in the faculty of letters and you're doing uh, uh, you're reading um, uh, uh, modern letters you're reading lang uh, 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 American literature, mm. reading common word literature, common word literature mm -hmm. and you're doing uh, 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 English prosodies. What is the professional component of all those courses? Now, my idea would be to see how to teach you or to inject what I call a creative writing so that at the English department, can you write a poem? Yes. Can you represent a story in a poem? Can you be able to, if they, uh, they, 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 they complete your training program, your training model, such mm -hmm. that by the time you graduate from the university, you can now run uh, a public uh, secretariat for letter writing. Mm -hmm. Thus, you can write petition, mm -hmm. you can write letters of appreciation, mm -hmm. you can write letter requests for. So you are recognized as a secretariat in, in, in the domain of public writing. Yes. You can write contracts because they should be able to drill you on this. Yes. Now, this question as to whether somebody who studies cinema is a very vast domain. Mm -hmm. Now, if a, a, a student goes to university and learns camera work to operate the camera, yes. that person can subsist, can actually make a living. Yes. Because we are in the process of saying, listen, that's a talent. But I always would advise, listen, while learning to be an editor, to sit and edit films, also learn to be uh, maybe a sound or uh, um, a light controller. Yes. So that you are not tied, you are not like a horse in blinkers. Multiply your chances. Yes. There is something they call the Jewish culture. It says, after you have gone to university and you have had your first degree, you need to find out something. What can you do with your hands? Mm -hmm. What can you do with your hands? And this is my policy. In this whole life, in our whole existence, you are only valuable in a community if you can do one of two major things. One, do you produce goods that society needs? Do you produce something that somebody would, 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 would require? Mm -hmm. If not, two, are you rendering a service yes. that community wants exactly. or people want? If you cannot produce something and you cannot render a service, then you are in existence. Mm -hmm. Society operates today based on two things. Mm -hmm. Everything is reduced to this. If you can't produce something, then be able to advertise and package something somebody else has produced so that you find your own value. Mm -hmm. If you can advertise what somebody has produced, be able to render a service. Maybe you can clean or you can do decoration with your hands, Jewish culture. They say, you have finished learning this. You have the certificate. Yes, they say, okay, put the certificate. What else can you do? Mm -hmm. God endowed us with a lot of potentials. A lot of people, if anyone who ends up with a certificate, the moment that certificate is, is taken away from you, and you can't do anything, anything with your hands. Yes, true. Then it's a risk. Exactly. It's a huge risk. Today, if I can sit down here, I can be contracted as a scriptwriter for films. Mm -hmm. For I can be. Uh, cont In fact, I can I can do consultancy yes. to write uh, scripts for people who go and produce. I can write my own poems and public. I can write my own. Now I can also do. Uh, uh, motivational speaking. I could uh, stand in, uh, people organize their events, and then I say, okay, I want MC. to be the impresario. Mm -hmm. I want to be the MC, and I will be paid. Now, what this means is, you must find something. The education we have is to wake up our abilities, expand our thoughts, yes. and then deepen True. our uh, uh, possibilities of relating with the environment the way mm -hmm. we grow. If not, if you depend only on certificate, yes. you will not do it. First of all, I had a first degree in English. Mm. All right, yes. with specialization in African literature. Then I went on to do a professional master's in theater. Then I continued to do uh, 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 there in theater. All right, then I went to PhD. Now, 
I needed to find something that is more hands-on, that is more practical. If not, all right, you will not find your space in yes. this. So students who enroll to do films can actually break even, but you need something on standby, just in case. That's why when you see anybody who is selling in shops, they try to multiply the opportunity so that anybody who gets in there, if you don't want to buy sweets, you buy match. If you don't want to buy match, you buy chocolate. You want to buy chocolate, you buy a pen. You don't want to buy a pen, you buy a ruler. Yes. Now, if you have only a shop for rulers, you see that you, 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 you reduce your chances. Right. So we are bound to multitask ourselves because mm. we are in an environment where, in fact, I always tell people, in this country right now, it should be difficult for anybody saying that I'm looking for a job and I can't find. Yes. Come on, in a country where everything still has to be done and you say you can't find a job, it's because you are looking for a white collar job. Maybe if I were to tell you my story as an uh, 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 undergrad, yes. undergraduate student in the yes. university, I used to go to Mashem Fundi, I buy a rule and I hire a boss and I take to Eddie now in oh, Limbe, wow. or I take to, to, to Limbe and sell. On coming back, I'll buy whiskey. I'll go to Mabeta and buy crayfish. I was distributing, share, uh, selling crayfish here at Acacia uh, Market. Mm. There were moments I would go and buy a goosey, come here and sell. What am I saying? Wow. That we have wow. potentials. Only things. those who want the white collar jobs. Yeah, exactly. Today, I mean, I, mean I, can, I, can, I can claim white collar job, but yes. you know what? If that office is taken away from me, I go down the street I and I ask Mavis. I come here and say, hey, uh, Hollywood uh, TV, please, you guys, I hear you are doing a production. <laughs> I want to feature on your set, on your set <laughs> as an actor. You will pay me, yes. right? Yes. So, we need to impact our kids with the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. We need to tell our young people the right things. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I, 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 I shed tears when I see young people struggling through the desert mm -hmm. to go to America, Europe. Sometime, well, someone listening to me will say, yeah, you're sitting there, you tell us not to go. What else do we sit here and do? Well, I'm saying there's a lot we can do in yes. this country. And for those who are looking up and waiting for government, no government in the world can supply job opportunities well, everybody. for everybody. True. This structure where we are is doing well. Mm -hmm. Where is the government uh, a, a hand in it? This private initiative. Yes. Someone thought and looked at the gap existing in something and created this studio. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Mm -hmm. The idea is we need to look, you know, you need to think out of the box mm -hmm. and then Come up with your own initiative and you get things going. Beautiful. This 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 master stroke that you, you're sharing here. I mean, a lot of people don't get to have the opportunity to, to get this sharing. And sometimes we have um, even students go into higher learning institutions without that uh, orientation. Yes. Yes. What do you have to say about that when it comes to our higher learning institutions? Uh, uh, I think there's there is a problem. Yes. There's something at the University of Yaoundé one is often organized, they say uh, Semen orientation, and this week of orientation happens after students have enrolled and they have even started classes. Then they do orientation. Mm -hmm. This is something that is supposed to be done, actually, last years in college, so that they begin to canalize position and structure students on their track based on their innate capacities. Yes. Sometimes, of course, you know that not everything you learned in college or in university is what gives you food yes it was is what, what you, you depend on yes now this is the reason we say even if you are learning this please find time to do some complementary courses mm -hmm. now for, for 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 us i would say uh, for parents who want their kids to go to university you must identify some key persons you want to emulate or you you, you need to send your kids to go in for orientation mm -hmm. sometimes the university systems you know, the way it is organized here is, doesn't give enough uh, uh, ground for, for orientation for students to know the end point yes. of their studies. I, I this is something that we need to work on. Yes. All right? Because before somebody enrolls, at the entry, you should be able to define what that person is getting True. out to qualify exactly. for. Exactly. And this has, uh, you, you know, I all, always call up my, my questions on either masters or PhD juries. I ask now, after you've you entered here and you did this research and you're coming out today as a master's, you have a master's degree in this, what has changed in you? Mm. If you cannot demonstrate practically that af after having gone through this research, now this is a transformative uh, 
uh, evidence, uh, in, evidence my life. in your life, yes. then you have gone through education, but education, education has not, not gone <laughs> through you. You see what I mean? Yes. So the idea is for us, for anybody to get to enroll in a university, you must ask yourself basic questions. Mm -hmm. Not at the end, but at the beginning. Yes. What do I wish or what do I want for my kids? Mm -hmm. And those questions must be answered by careful analysis of the expected results mm -hmm. and what that student will qualify for by the time they leave. And above all, and I like the hands-on issues, where at the time you are graduating, you did your major in this, you did minor in this. A lot of students have ended up finding their pathway in life through the minor, not even the major. Mm -hmm. And so we must multiply those chances, give our students the opportunities and our children the opportunity to know what they are going in for. Mm -hmm. When I enrolled in university, there were a lot of friends who went to the English department or geography because all their friends were going there. Yes. Not because they knew what exactly. was happening. True, true, true. Now that should change. Today it should change. Now the, 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 um, the, the Department of Geography has... Uh, a national geographic system, which is a professional course, where you go to it now, the decentralization program targets people like that. Okay. All right? They would be the ones to develop, to do mappings of, and then uh, uh, draw up, you know, the development program of a certain neighborhood mm -hmm. and look at what it would look like. You know? So that for any student getting into geography, you define your position. What do you hope to live with? And how would you be able to contribute to development at the end of your studies? The moment you answer these questions, then you are good to go. This is interesting. This is very insightful. And I hope you guys are taking your notes and you have your dictionary by your side. <laughs> Before we proceed, uh, I'd like to turn to Nick. Hello, Nick, do we have any questions? Yes. Yes, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we have, um, we have some very, very interesting questions here. We have Solange Ojo, who's hmm. asking, She's how, a does, lady. Yeah, how does the national director address the challenge and opportunities presented by digital platforms and streaming services in the context of film distribution and education? Hmm. Great question. Thank you, uh, Solange. Solange. I'm right here on this TV channel that operates essentially online because I think it is a domain we need to give priority to. It's a domain we need to take full advantage of. You see, in, in, uh, one of the major challenges of communion films is that of distribution. Mm -hmm. Today, because we, we have very few halls. In fact, in Duala, we have our three halls. In, in Yaoundé, we have two halls. Well, uh, two halls, uh, one run by uh, Canal Olympia, which is a French, and then the other, Cinema United, that is... But then, if you go in there, I don't know what percentage of Cameroonian films they show. Mm -hmm. What this means is we are now left only with online and, if you care, uh, 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 some of those social media portals that people could explore film. So our idea is to say, hey, you know what? These are existing possibilities for us. We can take advantage of the uh, 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 technological evolution mm -hmm. and use these domains to send our films, to make sure that our our products are consumed well over. Sometimes this disadvantage becomes an advantage to those who know how to explore opportunities. Yes. Now, uh, Solange is talking about the opportunity, Ojong is talking about the opportunity offered by the uh, social media and new technology. And that's exactly why I'm here. Yes. This is a channel that is run purely online. Yes. And I believe that it has, it gives us even a possibility for someone to be traveling no one travels with their, with their TV set. Yes. No one travels carrying their, their, their TV set in a, in, 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 in a box, mm -hmm. but with, with your phone. So this is exactly what we are doing because we are looking at possibilities of how we can keep it going while we're looking for means and ways of setting standard cinema mm. because that's part of the challenge. We're yes. working towards that yes. because we have uh, noted with uh, uh, a lot of dismay that uh, Cameroonian films are not seen by Cameroonians because uh, they don't have many opportunities. Oh, but there's platforms. a wonderful opportunity. One young man whom I admire very much, they, they call him Musing Derry. Mm -hmm. He created the Film Room. Now, Film Room is an initiative yes. which if I were to, if I had an opportunity, I would ask Ojong Solange, hey, get to Musing Derry, go to his Film Room, then you can now watch Cameroonian films. This is an opportunity that this young man, he's a prominent actor on the Cameroonian 
cinema, and the Kamenian movie uh, uh, platform. He looked at the situation and then thought of an innovative way mm. by which to allow communities to have access to this mm. film. Mm. So he, he put in place the, the, the film room. Now, this is one of those opportunities that we said, listen, let other people emulate what Musim Derek has mm -hmm. done. And that he's, wow. even if it's not enough, that is at least something. Yes. All right? And now we can, of course, we can talk about him and his initiative because he's giving uh, possibilities for Cameroonians or people not just only in Cameroon, out of here to look at the productions that are going on. You can weigh and you can be able to measure the number of productions coming or that are, 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 are cropping up in this country. And the from quality what, as well. From what? Yeah, and the quality. Yeah. You know, from what runs on this. So Solange will tell you, we are looking at possibilities of um, expanding this. Um, you know, the Ministry of Arts and Culture, we can't buy Android phones and give to every Cameroonian. But we can, uh, uh, we're using the, the, the uh, multi, uh, multimedia center, the Ministry of Arts and Culture, mm -hmm. to do what you are just asking me. Because it's evident that in the absence of cinema halls, we are not giving people the possibilities to watch their films on their cell phones. Mm -hmm. We are giving them possibilities to um, check around the world, sit in your room and do a tour of the world by simply checking on your phone. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Unfortunately, the Ministry of Arts and Culture and the Department of uh, 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 cinema cannot buy cell phones for everyone. You <laughs> can encourage and galvanize people on the potentials that there is in this domain. Beautiful. Very good question. You see, when I took up this office, one of my drives, I came up with something called BW Cameroon, their image and sound, which is bringing the world to Cameroon through image and sound. Wherever I've had the opportunity, last year in uh, September, I was in, in Toronto, uh, Toronto International Film Festival, mm -hmm. with the objective of identifying potential collaborators. And there is a young man in our country, and I always like that when we have the opportunity, I want the world to stand up for this boy. They call him Abu Gilbert. Mm -hmm. When he organizes CAMIF, Cameroon mm -hmm. International Film Festival in Boya, he brings people from around the world with the objective of pairing them up with Cameroonian filmmakers yes. to say, okay, what else can we be doing? When Basek Bakobio organizes a crown noir, he shops around the world and yes. brings in potentials, yes. bring, bring in people, and the objective is to identify areas where there can be collaboration. Yes. There is this uh, 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 other film festival, Yara Film Festival, yes. organized by Siri Mwet. Sylvie also has, I mean, she's done also a, a, a wonderful job. She's done a fantastic job. There are some Americans, I remember uh, Max Washer came from the US, and we are looking up to building co-production deals with them. Yes. And presently, there's somebody from uh, uh, Hems Pro in, in, in Ghana, my friend, uh, Formuta Hems in Canada, has a structure in place that is doing exceptionally well. His films have not even shown on local uh, um, uh, festivals, but then they have won awards around the country. Presently, there's somebody from that platform in Ghana to attend the Ghana Festival. Oh, wow. And part of his mission has been to identify those with whom they can collaborate, mm -hmm. you know, to do co-production. And I'd like to respond to this. You see, uh, um, when... Gilbert Abba organized the, the, the 2023 edition of Cameroon International Film Festival. The, one of the programmers of Toronto International Film Festival in Canada was invited to Boya. And our mission, which we have continued because I've been in constant communication and discussion with the uh, uh, ambassador and some people at the Canadian High Commission, we are looking at possibilities of building networks so that we get Canadians we get Americans, we get uh, 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 French people to come over so that we, we craft deals. Mm -hmm. Because the secret of co-production and the fallout of it are enormous. The secret of co-production is show them your potentials. Convince them that you have good stories. Convince them that you are committed to what you're doing. And once they have seen evidence, they will come running. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. So... How much we are working, there's a lot going on presently to put in place uh, possibilities of co-production between Cameroonian 
and foreign actors. No, you know, uh, um, of course, it's no news to you that a lot of uh, enthusiastic guys in Cameroon uh, CFI, Cameroon film industry, have been bringing Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to go beyond Nigeria, mm -hmm. all right? Yes. They have been going to Nigeria, so we want to go beyond Nigeria and say, you know what? We need to explore domains in, in Ghana, in Kenya, all of African countries, and then go to Canada, where we are actively negotiating something, and, are you, and the U.S., where we are actively negotiating something. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process, yeah. and we hope to get there because the world is very interested in our communion stories. Mm -hmm. Someone from the U.S. talked about the Mangabel story, mm -hmm. Duala Mangabel. They are interested in it. There are a lot of stories. I remember this American, Max Washo, who brought other people, and then they said, Oh, today the world is ready to consume communion stories. Please, you guys get out our stories. Now, because we may not have the money, we are looking at possibilities of inviting them over. So when we get into partnerships, then now we can produce, mm. you know, and our films will be able to sell over there and here. And progressively, we have plans to, to see what it takes to jumpstart the setting up of cinema halls in the regions of this country. That's, that's beautiful. Yes. Nick, before, before you go ahead, uh, Prof mentioned something that, that brought me to, to this. Uh, someone uh, had uh, a question, and the question was, he said, what uh, is the ministry doing to create a fusion between Francophone and Anglophone filmmakers? Because he thinks that they have different approaches to movie making. And he feels that collaboration in cinema is a very active tool towards promoting nat national unity. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure there's a conflict between Anglophone and, and Francophone filmmakers. Yes. In this country, we have two cultures that are operating, subcultures that are operating side by side. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I say this because I have Francophones who have produced films in English. Mm -hmm. And I have Anglophones who have produced films in French. Now, what this tells you is, you see, the, 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 the French uh, system follows the civil law. Mm -hmm. The Anglo-Saxon system follows the common law. Yes. Now, what we are doing, what the ministry is doing is saying, listen, and this is this it a number of times that there is no way you can lump it into one. And of course, if you, if you know that the question of um, uh, special status is on account of our uniqueness, mm -hmm. the unique culture of the Northwest and Southwest, what this means is that we have our subcultural inclination that must be respected. Filmmakers have a choice depending on, on which platform you want to operate. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're asking for a fusion, that is not what anybody wants to do because you can do... Now, you have people who do their films either in English and then they do voiceover yes. or they, they translate the films mm -hmm. in French. Mm -hmm. That's fine. True. Now, there is no conflict as such because a lot of Francophones have gone and done their films in Boya yes. in English. Yes. So, we don't have an issue with that. And I, I, I would like to say this because... Uh, some guys in uh, CFI, the standard structure, they have imagined a certain conflict and they are saying, but some people are saying it with conviction yes. that the Ministry of Arts and Culture, and imagine, that's a structure that is groomed out of our, because it has the signature of Anglo-Saxonism, yes. which means I should be, a, in fact, I oversaw the creation of it from its nascent stage. Hmm. And can I be expected reasonably to be part of what will kill it? No. no, I'm telling them, you know what? We have possibilities. If they come up with programs to do some kind of retraining, some kind of reorientation, some kind of workshops mm -hmm. meant to uh, give them added value in uh, technicalities, yes. in angles of shots, in production, now the ministry can be interested. Yes. But it becomes a problem if the CF as a structure mm -hmm. think that they could take decision on behalf of communion cinema. Mm. Because not everybody belongs to, to CFI. CFI. Exactly. You understand? Uh, yes. Not everybody belongs to CFI as a standard structure True. that is regular. Mm -hmm. But they have wonderful opportunities and I think what they should be doing because uh, and let us be frank to say they have opened up the, the, the world to Cameroon by Individuals in there have gone over like uh, uh, the, if today Cameroon is is is, is in the Oscars, mm -hmm. it stands to the proactive measure of one or two guys who are in CFI. Mm -hmm. Today they were saying, "Oh, CFI has taken Cameroonian films to it's an individual," and I know that very well. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't stop CFI pulling the most out of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop them, you know, taking advantage of this and developing more programs. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at, at, pos at possibilities of inviting 
uh, 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 distributors the world over. And then I invite filmmakers of Cameroon and put them side by side and say, okay, you guys discuss and find what does it take for your films to be on Netflix. We already know what they take because some people have defined their limits. Mm -hmm. But it will be interesting to get these people who make effective use of the opportunities at their disposal. Yes. Rather than, you know, this bickering about, oh, somebody hates CFI. No one can hate CFI as a structure yes. because whether you like it or not, those young people have a vision, a very strong one. Today, I, I, I sympathize even with uh, uh, filmmakers of French origin who think that they cannot identify with CFI. Listen, it's your right not to join it because, of course, that structure is built on the uh, 1990 law of association, freedom of association. You can't force anybody to be part of it, mm -hmm. but you cannot ignore CFI mm -hmm. as a structure today yeah. because they have gone far and wide. Okay. What they need to do is clean their own internal mess. There was some kind of contradiction I noticed the other day with... Uh, Imagine CFI has, CFI operates only because it has the, the guilds, actors' guilds, producers' guilds, writers' guilds. Mm -hmm. Now imagine this oddity where either actors' guild is signing a memorandum of understanding with CFI. It doesn't speak. Mm -hmm. Who is now CFI? Because CFI exists only as far as those guilds are concerned. Now, if they have to be relating with guilds based on, on uh, uh, MOU, mm -hmm. then there is a dysfunction somewhere. Then those guilds are, are, are now autonomous. If they're autonomous, then let us refer to them as something that belongs to Cameroonian cinematographic platform. Mm. And how then do you say a CFI exists because of these structures and these structures to relate with now the, 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 the organizing, or if you say the board chair, and then they, they now have to sign MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with Board. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't tie. It doesn't tie. Totally. These are the contradictions we all must put on the table and look at and say, hey, you know what? We can clean our mess and move on. Mm -hmm. As individuals, we can walk, but as a group, we can go further. Mm. Ah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, insightful. <laughs> Nick, they have a shot. So insightful. Oh, bad. As Mr. Bangkwan as what are the key initiatives and programs currently being undertaken to support and promote the development of cinematography and the digital arts in Oh, yeah, for my bands. <laughs> That's my student. Uh, oh. Thank you for this question. What's the initiative? I'll tell you very quickly. There are uh, multi-dimensional uh, uh, strategy that is being put in place. One, uh, we're looking at the possibilities of creating what I've called the Autonomous Film Fund to fund selected uh, film productions of those who have products that can be marketable, bankable products, we bring them over we can discuss the, the terms and then we supply. Secondly, we look at distribution because uh, one of the major challenges of communion films Yes, it's marketing. It's marketing. Yes. And uh, uh, distribution. Where do we see our films? Where can we go watch our films? So there's a strategy. I'm connecting with uh, different mayors because my idea now is that to make film, to make cinema in Cameroon sustainable, I need to work with the different mayors. And I identify that in, in the Southwest, for example, <clears throat> I'm working with the mayor of Boya, mayor of uh, Kumba, and mayor of Limbe. These three towns of the Southwest, they are potential areas mm. in which we we'll set up cinema halls. All right? In Bamenda, presently, it's only one upstation. Now, in the other regions, because my idea is, once we have identified, in, in, in Yaoundé, for example, we are talking to, to um, uh, mayor of Yaoundé 6, mayor of Yaoundé... Then a, a selection of mayors here. And once they agree, because I have a project that is ongoing with the European Union to, to, to find means and ways of planting cinema halls in the regions of the country. And it is going to be in the, 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 the local councils because they have the structures. And then they have the means to protect them. When you leave it in the hands of individuals, sometimes, you know, not only may not, they may not be able to sustain it, but once it is the council, councils have reason they have enough reason because it generates some fallout right mm -hmm. so they want to do so those are the plans we have and additionally we're looking up to building uh, a collaborative deal between uh, foreign film producers and local film producers that's at the level of the ministry of arts and culture we're bringing people together so they can 
exchange notes. So, that, Bans, I'm sure you, you would like this. We're looking up to, because after the shutdown, uh, Conte d'Affectation Special, which came after FODIC, now we are thinking of autonomous film form. And of course, everybody knows why uh, Conte d'Affectation, that's a special support fund for, for, for culture and cinema. Hmm. That fund existed for 17 years. Oh, wow. it, was, it was initiated in 2002, during which President Beer would pump in a billion every month. Oh. No, sorry, every year. Okay. And this money was not just for cinema, it was for all domains of art. So you come to the uh, Cultural Association, they, they apply. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 film actors, they come and apply. In the end, we have situations where some people ask for money to produce films. Yes. Someone would submit a request, he needs 15 million to do a film, then they give him 3 million. Mm -hmm. The problem at this level are multidimensional. One, that person looks at the money, if he cannot raise additional, what you call, a partnership fund to complete and run the project, then he will not do his film. Mm -hmm. So I have witnessed situations where someone asked, then they give him that kind of money, went and bought a piece of land, and he started building. So he has not produced. Mm -hmm. From our analysis, I did with my students, uh, 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 Boris Kabe and Yadia, we realized that for 17 years, that that fund operated, mm -hmm. the special support fund for culture and, and, and cinema, for 17 years, government spent 17 billion francs. If you look at the productions on ground, we have maximum 37 productions, out of which you have just about six or seven that are uh, standard productions. Mm -hmm. But then the government has spent how much? That amount of money. Now, I am asking, we don't need to give, you, I don't want the government give me 17 billion. I don't even want one billion. Give me 600 million one time and we'll multiply that money. So I pick one or two, three projects that are of good standards, mm -hmm. that are bankable, and then accompany them. They are oh. produced. And then the moment those products are obtained, they are bought or they are sold or some, yes. then now the money is plowed back and mm -hmm. then we can begin to go again. For you see? Project. So, bands, I'm sure uh, you like to hear this. Those are the programs we have. By his grace, we're going to get there. Okay. Nick, before, before, before we, we, we go ahead, because when Prof talks, he highlights a lot of things. Uh, that sparked uh, some topic that I would have want us to, wanted us to talk about. I remember a couple of times when I attended auditions, we would have this experience where they talk about us wanting, if you want to get registered and maybe have some salary at the end of the month. A lot of people had complaints about that. People registered, giving their monies, and they had no feedback. But then when these people came, they would tell us about getting registered at the Ministry of Arts and Culture, where at the end of every month as an actor you have salary and all of that is that there... is a possibility okay. now this is the condition there are different um uh, 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 author's rights yes. there are different uh, groups like now each time you have a production mm -hmm. and you have taken part in a production that is commercialized mm -hmm. if you are registered with social Adra, that's the, the, the arm that is responsible for film production. Okay. If your film runs on CRTV and you have raised out that film with Susie Ladra, the moment, because CRTV pays rights, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. to that structure of Susie Ladra, you go there and you claim your rights. If you, as an actor or an actress in that film and you are not registered there, you are the one losing. So they are right. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. That's oh, yes. Such. Because there is the, 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 the call, um, uh, there's a draw voisin. All right? Yes. There's this neighborhood rights where you are not the author of the script, you are an actor. Yes. Now, as an actor, you are paid as an actor. Mm -hmm. Even choreographers are paid as choreographers. Film directors are paid as film directors. Producers are paid as film producers on condition that a state uh, 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 television house has shown or has broadcast your film and then they pay the rights because every... Uh, uh, film product that runs on national television, they pay. But the unfortunate thing, and this is where it's a little complicated, is not all the TVs operating in our country pay. Mm -hmm. Only CRTV as of now. Yes. Now the other two, Canal 2, uh, Equinox, mm -hmm. uh, and all of that, and Spectrum Television, sometimes they decide to just buy off. Now, if you come with a good film, they buy them off, yes. and then they show. Now, for you to benefit from a film that has been exploited as an actor, you need to go and enroll with so Siladra, you need to enroll with LASCAP mm. and SNDV. These are neighborhood rights. All right? So a lot of young people who have participated in films and those films actually are, are being aired and 
they are not registered there, you don't get paid. So what they told you is not a lie, it's oh, true. Wow. But then you must, and you cannot go there now to say you are, you are a comedian or you are an actor. You must go with evidence. Either a poster of a product that has been, uh, 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 a film that has been done and it's circulating, then they know you are one. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. Um, there are regulations in place. There are regulations, standard regulations. First of all, to make sure films meet our standards. That's why uh, I earlier said for films, for anybody who wants to produce a film, there are a number of documents you've, you, 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 you make available. Mm -hmm. You need, first of all, authorization to produce. Mm -hmm. We give you that authorization. Then you come now with authorization for shooting permit because you go to different angles of the town, yes. we give you. Once your, your film is ready, and you want to now show the films in cinema, you submit again a request to the national, because there's a national uh, film board. Mm -hmm. We are actually in the process of reworking, but presently, my office is doing that job. So you, you submit a request for uh, 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 authorization to project your film. Then we look at it and say, okay, this film, the reason is that if the film has scenes that can be injurious, can be damaging mm -hmm. to young people, we say, okay, this film is good only for adults. Mm -hmm. So we limit because there are different levels of visa. Mm -hmm. visa. Visa for all public, visa for restricted public, yes. visa for... So if there's a lot of violence, we don't want our kids exposed to violence because they will not be able to process that. Mm -hmm. So we limit it. So the objective is to make sure the norms and values are respected. Yeah. Now, in, in uh, regarding question of copyright, we advise people on what to do. We don't have um, the possibility of, of enrolling you in copyright. We cannot ensure you the rights, but we give you the information. You need to go and protect the rights because the moment you have your script and you go register it with Susila Dra, it becomes your property. No one can use it again. Mm. If you have not registered it, Anyone because the moment it? you go, Register, register it for, because, you know, your rights as a, um, a, a, a script writer mm -hmm. is guaranteed only by Susila Dra. You go there and say, this is my script I've written. They look at it and say, good, good script. Now, the moment that script is produced and then you come with evidence that that script is produced. Now, that's why people who do theater actors, now, the moment you take part in a production, a live production, that's happening either at university or at Hilton or at Mount Febe or wherever in town. The moment you finish, you go with evidence that you took part in this production and registered it. Now, it's an indication that you are now in the database, known as a comedian or an actor or a sub producer or whatever. The moment that is not done, it will be difficult. Yeah. Now, regarding uh, um, respect of, you know, author's rights, uh, this person is talking about... Uh, uh, protecting copyright. Yes. Copyright, we advise on how to protect your creative works. Yes. So that it's non for, it's not because it will be difficult for us to limit it to 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 cinema because uh, people write their their scripts in in you have your poetry, yes. you have your drama, yes. you have your novels, you have perhaps, you know, so you there are structures. If you come to us we advise you on how to make sure your rights are respected mm -hmm. so that that becomes your property right. There is a structure here, property, property right in uh, around the, the delegation of uh, uh, national security mm -hmm. where any you can even come with a logo and you go register it, that's your logo, so you protect it. Mm. You come up, yes, you come up with a design, you come up with a dress design that you are sure is your own, you yeah. go there. So that somebody copies it, you can now go and claim. Mm -hmm. If you have not registered it, you cannot, you cannot make any claim. claims. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what they mean by this. There's, there's no hair splitting conflict between Anglophone and Francophone filmmakers. There's none. Okay. Because, like I said, you see, even Francophones, of course, we know that some Francophones are sending their kids to, to uh, Anglophone schools. Mm -hmm. 
Just as some Anglophone filmmakers are doing films in, in, in French, mm -hmm. some Francophone filmmakers are doing films in English. There is no hair splitting conflict between uh, Anglophones and Francophones as far as cinema is concerned. Listen, the artistic domain is fluid. Perhaps there may be individual disagreement, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure we should avoid situations where two people have their different disagreement on some stuff, and then they generalize. Mm -hmm. Anglophones and Francophones, they don't have problems as such because they don't... Listen, problems at what level? It doesn't exist. No one obliges the other to do films in a particular language. Mm -hmm. No. So, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no such conflict. That's, that's a very interesting question. This person is asking, why is it that the selection for Oscars is limited to a certain organization? That's the question, right? Yes. I would say it is not limited to any organization. And I know why that person is saying that. You see, the structure that has taken Cameroon and introduced Cameroon to the Oscars is mm -hmm. CFI, the standard CFI, that's the registered organization. And I give them thumbs up for this. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who have broken down the, 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 the barriers. They are the ones who negotiated because it's not, it's, it's not offered on a platter of gold. That's something you need to work for. So some proactive guys in the CFI have gone ahead and secured and made Cameroon uh, a participant in the domain in the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Now, what this means is CFI is the affiliate with the yes, yes. Is, is, is affiliated with uh, uh, the Oscars. And yes. so they are in charge of selecting national selection. Exactly. Generally, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know if anybody has ever submitted uh, uh, films to CFI and then they say, oh, because you are not part, we will not send your films. They don't. Because recently, in fact, I, 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 I got a, a video, um, an open video of the board chair, Brenda Elum. She mm -hmm. came out powerful saying, listen, we are asking now, Oscars have flung open their doors. This is time for people to do submission. All right? It came out very clear. Mm -hmm. So nobody, if you do not submit, don't come back. And then once you submit, there's a scrutinizing board mm -hmm. that selects which film qualifies. Perhaps at that level, you cannot say, ah, but to the best of my knowledge, given that uh, uh, they have the obligation to respect certain norms and certain mm -hmm. standards, they themselves cannot discard a good film and pick something of substandard because at, the, at, at a certain level, once we do our own selection here, you are screening and send, you don't control what would happen over there. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, 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 this person is asking, what services? Presently, there is no alternative. Mm -hmm. To be frank with you, now we have only this entrance through the negotiated platform of CFI. For Cameroon films to access Oscars, we necessarily need to get the board chair. Now, our idea now is to... See, how can we make the selection process, the national selection process, an inclusive team? Such that to kill suspicion, to kill fear of favoritism, mm -hmm. to kill fear, fear of hatred, because it is normal that some people could now be thinking, ah, because it's in the hands of CFI, the, the structured organization, that not everybody uh, uh, subscribes to. Mm -hmm. Now, if we send our films to it, they may decide not to. Mm -hmm. But as of now, I don't have any such evidence, okay. to be frank. I don't have evidence that... CFI has not forwarded certain film. And I rather have evidence that they have made an open call that presently uh, Oscars have flung open their doors. Please, Cameroonians, Anglophones, Francophones, if you have films that you think can go through the Oscars, mm -hmm. send them. Mm -hmm. That is an opening that CFI has done. Yeah. And I would rather uh, 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 implore, I would advise, and I would urge any other person who might have listened or who has this kind of feeling, approach, as of now we have only one window to, 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 to access Oscars. Mm -hmm. We need to respect them. Go to, because they have said, they have certain conditions, laid down conditions for films. I mean, they have a certain period that that film must have 
been out. And then they have certain, I think, uh, 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 technical prescriptions and the length, in terms of length. The moment your film is judged to have respected those conditions, that criteria, send them in and then see what happens. And I know, as for Netflix, I know, you know, uh, a Netflix platform, they are pretty, uh, very tight on conditions. Yes. They want films that fulfill certain technical prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And the moment you are producing for Netflix, they even go as far as detecting the kind of camera you should use. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. So that's a different whole, a different ballgame. Yes. Now, is there an alternative structure? I say we are negotiating. Uh, if, I, I think it will not hurt if we multiply the um, access windows to Oscars so that we have a national commission yes. that pre-selects Cameroonian films. Because as of now, I'm sure some people are not sending to CFI because, and I would not encourage them to do that. If you are not sending, I will tell you, please stop where you are. Send your films to CFI. Let them uh, screen it and see. If it's good enough, they will forward it. If it's not good, they will tell you, this is what is not right with it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this because there are moments where people sit down and then they draw their conclusions yes. based on hearsay mm -hmm. or based on, uh, I just feel like yes. uh, the board chair doesn't like me. I just feel like uh, uh, the key actors in the, this thing would not like yes, me. Because there have been gossips about partiality. In yes. The now, case. as far as I'm concerned, I don't have any evidence of partiality. Of course, if I don't, uh, I, can't, I can't create one. Yes. But the moment I have evidence that there has been partiality, I will that say, hey, handle. be careful. Yes. But now I can tell you, this is a little... Uh, window of problem because it shows that CFI doesn't have national following and so there's bound to be some sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 suspicion. Mm -hmm. But what I would say for now is, you see, let us protect, let us guide our own, let us follow this wonderful initiative. Mm -hmm. As of now, CFI has given us the access to get to Oscars. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the board chair came out very clearly and announced that now we are receiving submissions mm -hmm. that will be proposed to Oscars. If you think your film is good enough, please submit. submit okay. Because as of now, we have no other option. But maybe with time, we, we look up because, you know, we are moving forward. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're looking up to having a national window that would be uh, a national board of selection committee that will sit to select films mm -hmm. and propose. And then the Oscars can now do their own screening and where it gets, it gets. Mm. Insightful and very deep, very, very educative and hmm. interesting one, as well. One last question from Barry Banter. Yes, thank you. What is the legal admission of national directors in Nigeria to the Festival at the end of the year? Uh, uh, my vision and mission. Bounce, you, you're asking the obvious. It's like asking what is the mission and vision of the Ministry of Arts and Culture. <laughs> Mr. Of, the, the Department of Cinema and Audiovisual Productions is out one to promote films of value, to promote cinematography, to promote the telling of our stories, mm -hmm. to encourage the circulation, the production and distribution of Korean films. Mm -hmm. And we are accompanying filmmakers down the road with the idea that the economy of filmmakers, the economy of the country would eventually grow. Mm -hmm. Because our mission is to give the world an opportunity to live our realities mm -hmm. in cinema. Our objective is to help such that those who are actively present in the domain, let them be able to subsist, let them be able to, 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 to live from what they're doing. Mm. And above all, let Cameroonian multicultural, uh, um, uh, the, 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 you know, we have an aura of a huge multiculturalism. Yes. Let the world live our culture. Yes. Let the world experience the power of our creativity. Yes. So the mission of the Department of Arts and the, 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 the Department of Cinema and Audiovisual Productions is to ensure the promotion, the propagation of Cameroonian cinema. That, that will bring me to, the, even if you have something before you go, I, I, I wanted us to talk a little on the, the role of cinemat cinematography and audiovisual productions in valorizing our cultural identity and preserving it as well. Because I, I think they are so intertwined. Yes. You see, uh, a cinema is a platform for valorization of our cultures, for promotion of our local realities, mm -hmm. and for propagation of our values. Mm -hmm. 
Cinema is like a book. When you sit through a movie, it's like you are reading a document. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are looking up to doing is making sure that that book that you are reading with your eyes on the screen, let it instruct your spirit, let it change the spirit man in you, mm -hmm. let it increase your value in terms of moral inclination, mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, I would say, national objectives yes. and the responsibility as a citizen. Yes. Sometimes our films are supposed to work like, uh, uh, I would say citizenship education is yes. supposed to happen through our films. Mm. Films are supposed to be uh, a, a platform where you, you, you instruct, you inform, you educate, and you entertain. Yes. Those two components have to be in our films mm -hmm. because um, you can change a people's mindset. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, sometimes it is said that uh, domination, mm -hmm. new culturalism, new colonialism, it's happening right our doorsteps through the image. Exactly. When, when, when I see what some cable distributors are doing, mm -hmm. they are infiltrating our space with uh, uh, video and film productions that go contrary to our values, mm -hmm. that insult our norms mm -hmm. and our cultures. Mm -hmm. And now this is where we need to find checking mechanisms to put block at what does not enhance our value systems. Yeah. So. The role of cinema is to promote our culture, to promote our values, to promote our norms. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure it happens. Yes. And that's why when we're working with cinema, uh, with cinematographers, the, 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 our relationship in ba is based on how much of value, of norms, of regulations are you respecting as far as the domain is concerned. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you don't just get up and do a production that does not enhance... Um, the Cameroonianness mm -hmm. that does not really en enhance even your culture as a Bafu exactly, girl or exactly. my identity as a Kambe boy. Mm -hmm. All right. The duty we have is present the right, the uh, uh, interesting components of our culture. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to just praise. If there are components of our culture that are bad, present them and say, hey, mm -hmm. we need to move away from this. Because the interesting thing with cinema is that it does what it criticizes. Mm -hmm. Because on the image, if you want to mm -hmm. put a tag on prostitution, you better present the prostitute. Yes. And then you treat that person in a way mm -hmm. so that the message sticks. Yes. Because it is said there's a Chinese proverb that when I hear, I forget. When I see, mm -hmm. I remember. When I do, I know. Cinema is about doing. Because sometimes you sit down, you're watching films, and you find yourself yeah, empathizing yeah. with the actors or with the actresses mm -hmm. in the scene. That is a transformative impact right yes. there. Yes. yes. Yeah, uh, uh, some critics have spoken about uh, the absence of local color in our productions because they feel that we've had the influence of foreign products. Uh, because of the role of the media, we have cable. People, for example, watch a lot of Nigerian films, even movie makers. And so sometimes, even right from writing to production to post production, you, we, we, we tend to experience the absence of local color because of that influence. Uh, do you think there is something that the government could put in place to regulate that? We've had countries where they ban foreign content or they limit the consumption of foreign content to be sure that, okay, we imbibe our own and so, so that we can... Uh, that's because it's shot in Cameroon, but all cultural predisposition in that film transposes um, our neighboring Nigerian culture mm -hmm. on the Cameroonian soil. Now, there are some components in that film that would not relate with our practical realities the way it is. Mm -hmm. Even the dress codes sometimes yes. tells you more of the Nigerian neighborhood. Yes. If you, call, you look at it as a Cameroonian film, you have a lot of questions. You look at it as an African film, you don't have an issue. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So I agree that there are a lot of copy and paste. Mm -hmm. And as of now, I want many people to do that copy and paste because you are boosting local potentials. You are boosting local initiative okay. you are but then there will come a moment where we don't need to start doing authentic communion film mm -hmm. i know also that some of the components because abogibe comes from manfe mm -hmm. manfe has a very close proximity with nigeria True. so there is a cross uh, uh, um, what a, a cross intersection mm -hmm. in their cultural predisposition mm -hmm. that the moment you are producing a film in Manfe and you're looking at the, 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 the culture of uh, Manu people, if you're not careful, yes. it would tie very neatly with the Nigerian culture. Now, if you have to accentuate the Cameroonianness, then you need to move a little bit away yes. so that 
your identity is not misconstrued or is not misunderstood for Nigerian identity. Yes. All and all, it doesn't take away the value of the film. But talking about cultural domination or the cultural rape, as I described, mm -hmm. we need to find means and ways of making sure that our authentic African or authentic, authentic Cameroonian culture is given proper representation, such that you will not mistake Cameroonian uh, production for a Nigerian, mm -hmm. only because people are... And you see, I give you the question of this Ashwabi. Mm -hmm. It's not naturally, uh, the term Ashwabi is not even Cameroonian. Uh, yes. It's an imported model. Mm -hmm. And there are some um, dress codes yes. that when you see, you can prefigure a Nigerian community. Mm -hmm. Now, if we fall in love with that, there's nothing wrong in falling in love with that, admire it, but also find components of our authentic Cameroonian culture that would be representative mm -hmm. so that you are not auctioning your own identity. Yes. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the question of banning local product or uh, importation of films, mm -hmm. the only way we can check is if we have cinema halls. Now we impose as a condition. Yes. For example, there's cinema uh, uh, Genesis in Douala. It's, it's, it's owned by Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And we have looked at it, even though 80% of his films are American and Nigerian, but there are, once in a while, he has Cameroonian films. Mm -hmm. We're pushing it gradually. We're saying, hey, it's a good thing you are here, but please, can you give us priority? Mm -hmm. So we, we go through negotiation so that let our, our culture, mm -hmm. let our tradition, let our identity not be uh, overpowered by the imported cultures. Beautiful. So those are the checking mechanisms we'll put in place yes. gradually. But you know, it cannot be a big stick because you can't even be too... Um, persistent mm -hmm. in that. Because first thing is we want to see the cinemas open. Mm -hmm. All right? And sometimes, if you want to get some people, we may even need to get the Pia, 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 the, 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 the Indian films. Mm -hmm. And that reminds people of those good old days. Then they will rush to see. Mm -hmm. Then you can do the kickbox. They mm -hmm. can come. Then now, let us also learn to do Cameroonian Pia, 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 and then do also the kickbox. Mm -hmm. Then do the, the, the uh, Ducey Nombri of the Indian. Films. The Cameroon way. The Cameroon way. Mm -hmm. So these are means and ways of, you know, bringing our local color into our own productions. Mm -hmm. And then we copy the idea from there, but we make it right. I have a, 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 a story I wrote, uh, Triple Trial, which is Rumi and Juliet that attend the other way around. Oh, okay. You know? So I take Shakespeare's work mm -hmm. and I twist it and I give it now a Cameroonian outlook. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I have stolen the idea. Yes. In, in literary terms, they say it's appropriation. Yes. You appropriate the concept and then you use it your way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's explicit enough. Is there another? Uh, I would say. Hmm. There are, the challenges are enormous. The first challenge is to find funding for cinema, mm -hmm. to find funding for film productions. Yes. It's quite a challenge. Yes. It has always been a challenge in everywhere in the world. But let me give you an example, the Israeli model. The Israelites, they, they found a way to raise um, uh, an autonomous fund and then they called for filmmakers and they went into partnerships. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, you, you want to do a film, your film costs six million francs, I'm giving you two million, bring four million, then we, call, we work together to get it done. Mm -hmm. That's a way to, to, to meet the challenge in the, in the domain of funding. Mm -hmm. Now, filmmaking itself, which requires some standard measures so that your films can cut across, that your films can sell in, can compete favorably in the international market. Mm -hmm. What we require here is make sure you find the right equipment. The right equipment means doing it with professional equipment. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the, 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 the equipment, you need to step next door and hire, or you beg, or you borrow. All right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes let us have the courage to bring in people who are more competent than us to work on our local production. Yeah. If I do a Cameroonian film and I bring in a foreign director to direct my movie here in Cameroon, mm -hmm. it doesn't become his own. Mm -hmm. He's doing it according to my culture. And so that's what I want. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the challenges we have is that of finding funding and that of distribution. Now, the opportunities are enormous. Because right now, yes, we don't have possibilities of viewing our images, but 
Musin Derek has created the film room. Now you guys have this uh, 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 framework, and I know you run another project in which you try to give out everything that is happening in the movie world. Yes, sir. And then there are possibilities you can actually watch uh, 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 films on your handset. Yes. Now, these so are nice. the opportunities. The opportunity that exists in the domain is the moment you come in and you have the potential, chances are so a lot of people are beginning to apply to shoot their films in Cameroon. Yes. And I have been encouraging this because of what I told you, BW Cameroon, mm -hmm. Image and Sound. Mm -hmm. Bringing the world to Cameroon mm -hmm. through Image and Sound. Because we have a lot of, um, I would say, touristic sites. If you look at the Mandara and the Kapsiki Mountains in the north, mm -hmm. You look at the 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 uh, uh, Mboya Mount mm -hmm. Cameroon in Boya. Yes. Around that area mm -hmm. is very interesting. There are some uh, areas around there you you, you you take a view, you enjoy what you're seeing. Now, if you look at the the remnants of colonial incursions mm -hmm. in Cameroon, yes. that makes room for a wonderful documentaries. Sure. So increasingly, people are taking interest in coming to Cameroon because. Cameroon is a virgin land mm -hmm. in terms of cinematography, in terms of scenery, and in terms of domains, I mean areas that can, people can use to shoot their films. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are beginning to take interest in it. And what this means is the opportunities are endless. So young people, take advantage, train yourself, groom yourself in a talent, and then be ready to partner with someone in order to give yourself visibility, explore your innate talents, and then you can begin to live from what you know. Beautiful. I, I think if we keep going on, we might never end today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so probably just... <laughs> this, this has been so deep. I mean, this has been exceptional. But before we go, uh, Prof, uh, how, where do you see Cameroonian uh, cinema? and uh, audiovisual productions five years from now? Woo! I see a blooming, a, 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 a blooming industry. Yes. Five years from now, mm -hmm. I'll tell you something. If you can, and I'm, I want anybody to write it down. Those who are watching, those who are, write it down. Five years from now, every region in this country is going to have a cinema. Yes. Five years from now, there will be uh, autonomous film fund. Mm -hmm. five, five years from now, a lot of, Co-production deals would have been going on and our films, our cinematography is going to step to a certain level. Yes. Five years from now, Cameroonians will be in the Oscars. Ooh. That is certain. Because we're already on Netflix. Yes. All right? That was the beginning. Now, if you, if you care to know, Cameroon featured at the Cannes with good films. Cameroon featured at Pespaco with good films. Cameroonian films have been selected for Toronto International Film Festival. Yes. I'm not allowed to bring that here because it's only maybe from the 12th that they're going to reveal, mm -hmm. they're going to release that. All right? This is what is making the world now run to Cameroon because they have identified that Cameroon is one of the yes. uh, emerging countries where there is talent, where there is um, a lot that could be plowed, that could be uh, harnessed. To, 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 to boost the, the, the film sector. So a lot of people will be running here. Yes. And let me tell you this. The, com the Nigerian cinema is grown to a level where they have reached their apogee mm -hmm. and they don't know where else to go. Mm -hmm. They are now looking for possibilities if for them to remain valued and uh, uh, consumed. They now need to sign deals with other people mm -hmm. and come on one of their best destinations. Yes. So five years from now, Mm. Cameroonian films will be in the sky. Yes. Will be in a, you, 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 you get into planes and then you'll be watching Cameroonian movies on board. That was poetic. Say amen. <laughs> amen, sir. Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 So in everything we see the art, even in how he speaks, I hope you did have fun. I hope you got insights. I hope your perspective was changed on so many things that concern cinema and art as a whole. That was the legendary Prof. Pai. Donatus. I hope uh, to see you next week on Sunday because we're going to be having another very interesting and insightful episode. Thank you so much for your comments and your contributions. My name is Mavis Tosh and from me and the entire Hollywood team and of course from Professor Fai Donatus, it's a bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>